Hello and welcome to the I, your English news bulletin. I'm Esther. These are the headlines. Amit Nigam, the superintendent of police Twensang, left his official residence 19 hours after the Confederation of Chang Students Union submitted an ultimatum demanding the removal of the SP. After the death of a 12-year-old child with Nipah virus in Kerala on Saturday, prompting the, it prompted the union government to rush a medical team to Kozekore district. Two health workers have been identified with symptoms of Nipah virus. President Ramnath Kovin honoured 44 meritorious teachers with the national awards on Teachers' Day. About 600 Taliban have been killed in Afghanistan's northern province of Panjshir, Afghan resistance forces claimed on Saturday. <clears throat> now for the news in details. Amit Negam, the superintendent of police Twensang, left his residence 19 hours after the Confederation of Chang Students Union submitted an ultimatum demanding the removal of the SP. He left at around 6.30 a.m. Sunday morning from his residence with all of his belongings and is staying now at Mokokchung. The order of the official transfer letter is yet to be ascertained. Pongso, the president of CCSU, stated that they would like to convey their appreciation to the government of Nagaland, office of the DGP, DC Twensang, CKS, Chang Apex bodies for bringing justice to the people. The CCSU also thank all the people that stood by them. Further, the president stated that they would always strive for the betterment of the society and fight for any injustice towards the people. We will always need such cooperation from all ends of the society, even in the future, he stated. President Ramnath Kovin honored 44 meritorious teachers with the national awards on Teachers Day. On the occasion, President Ramnath said that teachers and said that the future of the upcoming generation is safe with the teachers. Addressing the ceremony that took place virtually due to COVID-19, the president said he would like to congratulate all the teachers and knowing about such teachers assures him that the future of the upcoming generation is safe in the hands of such good teachers. As announced by the Joint Secretary, Ministry of Education, R.C. Meena, the national awards were given by the President, including teachers from Kargil. The awardees included Mamta Paliwal, Kamal Kishore Sharma, Jaktar Singh, Sanjeev Kumar Sharma and Muhammad Ali. Ramnath Kovind said that we know that Teachers' Day is celebrated in the memory of Dr. Radha Krishnan, who was known as a philosopher and scholar across the world, but wanted to be remembered only as a teacher. He has left an ineligible mark as a great teacher. After the death of a 12-year-old in Kerala because of Nipah virus on Saturday night, it prompted the union government to rush a medical team to Kozekode district. Two people have been identified with symptoms of the Nipah virus infection. Kerala Health Minister Veena George said that the two are among the 20 high-risk contacts of the 12-year-old child who died. After chairing a high-level meeting to take stock of the situation, the health minister told reporters that the surveillance team have identified 188 contacts till now, where 20 of them have been marked as high-risk contacts. Two of the high-risk contacts have symptoms and both are health workers. One works with a private hospital, while the other is a staff member of Kozekode Medical College Hospital. She further said that all 20 high-risk contacts will be shifted to the Kozekode Medical College by evening. While other contacts of the child have been asked to remain in isolation and the pay ward at the medical college hospital has been completely converted into a dedicated NIPA ward. Over 600 Taliban terrorists have been killed in Afghanistan's northeastern province of Panjshir, Sputnik reported, quoting the Afghan resistance forces on Saturday. The resistance spokesperson Fahim Dashti claimed that about 600 Taliban have been liquidated in various districts of Panjshir since morning. More than 1,000 Taliban have been captured or surrendered themselves. The spokesperson further added that the Taliban had problems with getting supplies from other Afghan provinces, Sputnik reported. 
Meanwhile, the Taliban offensive against Banshi resistance forces has slowed down due to the presence of landmines in the area. A Taliban source said fighting is continuing in Panjshir, but the advance had been slowed by landmines on the road to the capital, Bazarak, and the provincial governor's compound. Panjshir is a stronghold of the National Resistance Front, led by Ahmed Masood, the son of late ex-Afghan guerrilla commander Ahmed Shah Masood and ex-Vice President Amrullah Saleh, who had declared himself caretaker president. In Panjshir, former Vice President Amrullah Saleh hold out alongside Ahmed Masood admitted the perilous position of the National Resistance Front and Saleh earlier said in a video message that the situation is difficult and they have been under invasion and added that the resistance is continuing and will continue. Ning Mario Shimre, a 53-year-old man from Ukrul district of Manipur, got the national award from President Ramnath Kovin on the occasion of Teachers' Day. Shimre is a passionate teacher who teaches in Ukrul Higher Secondary School. In an exclusive interview with Hornbill TV, Shimre said he accepted the award, especially for three reasons. First being for development of a new strategy for teaching and learning of mathematics for standards 1 to 12. The second reason is a new number system which he called as bi-quadrat number system. And the third reason is he had developed a new concept while he called as, which he called as the concept of sub-syllables, which enable any word in English dictionary to pronounce correctly. Shimre said he is dealing with all kinds of students, both slow and fast learners. However, with the discovery of the new number system, slow learners will not have any difficulty learning mathematics. So happy, so uh, privileged to have received uh, the word from the president. And uh, as for me, I would like to say that it's the long years that I have been struggling struggling to improve my teaching technique so that i can teach the students in a better way and that's today i'm you know like enjoying the fruits by receiving this award this year there are mainly three things okay for which i was uh, awarded the national uh, awards to teachers 2000, 2021 the first one is the development of the new strategy of Teaching and learning of mathematics for standard 1 to 12, and in which I have discovered a new number system, by quadrant number system. And the third one is I have developed a new concept, concept of subsyllables, which has enabled us to pronounce any word in an English dictionary correctly and easily. It's a breakthrough. Shimre informed that he completed his Standard 12 from Kohima Science College and his BSc from St. Edmunds, Shillong. He has a teaching experience of more than 20 years and he is the only teacher from Manipur to get the award this year. Meanwhile, at the state-level Teachers' Day celebration held at City Convention Center in Imphal East District, Manipur Chief Minister N. Biren Singh awarded a cash reward of 1 lakh rupees to Shimre. Rashtriya Swayam Sevak Sangh, Chief Mohan Bhag Bhagwat, will meet intellectuals from the Muslim community at a five-star hotel in Mumbai on Monday. Notably, in July, Bhagwat had addressed an event organized by Muslim Rashtriya Manch in Uttar Pradesh, Ghaziabad. Speaking at the event, the RSS chief said that the concept of Hindu-Muslim unity is misquoted as there is no difference between them. As it has been proven, all Indians are the descendants of the same ancestors from the last 40,000 years. Bhagwat had said that there can never be any dominance of either Hindus or Muslims, but there can only be the dominance of Indians. With reports of counterfeit versions of Covishield vaccine circulating in the international market, a concern flagged by even the World Health Organization, the Center on Sunday shared a list of parameters to identify the authenticity of the COVID vaccines being used in the country. Parameters will help identify whether the vaccine is fake or genuine, the health ministry said in a letter written to the states, adding that it was prepared with information from the companies manufacturing Covishield, Covaxin and Sputnik V, the three vaccines currently being used in the Indian market. The notes sent to the states have details on the label, color and other details used by the vaccine manufacturer. 
Various reports have emerged recently claiming that counterfeit versions of Covishield, India's primary anti-COVID-19 vaccine, had been seized in Southeast Asia and Africa. Some of the counterfeit versions are also being sold across the country, media reports have claimed. The World Health Organization has issued an alert over the counterfeit versions of coronavirus vaccines. The government has also launched an inquiry based on these reports. Health Minister Mansuk Mandavia, who was recently elevated as Health Minister, said that three more vaccines for adults will be available in India soon. He said that at present three vaccines are available in India, Covishield, Covaxin and Sputnik. The minister further added that in the coming days, three more vaccines would arrive, including one from Zydus Cadilla. The other two will be from Genova and Biological Evans. Former Vice President of Afghanistan Amrullah Saleh has written to the United Nations on the humanitarian crisis in Panjshir, the last province out of the clutches of the Taliban, claiming the province was looking at a full-scale humanitarian catastrophe which might result in the genocide of Afghan people. Later, Amrullah Saleh, who declared himself as the acting president of Afghanistan after former president Ashraf Ghani fled the country, urged the UN and other international aid agencies to immediately mobilize their resources to rapidly and generously respond to this overwhelming humanitarian crisis. Amrullah Saleh said that around 2,50,000 people, including local women, children, elderly, and 10,000 IDPs who arrived in Pangshir after the fall of Kabul and other large cities are stuck inside these valleys and suffering from the consequences of this inhuman block. He added that if no attention is paid to this situation, a full-scale human rights and humanitarian catastrophe including starvation and mass killing, even genocide of these people are in the making. Amrullah Saleh further said that two decades of conflicts, recurrent natural disasters, disease outbreaks, COVID-19 pandemic and recent takeover of most of the country by the Taliban has plunged the country into one of the world's worst humanitarian crises. Amrullah Saleh claimed that over 3 million people have been displaced inside Afghanistan and more than 18 million people are in need of food aid for their survival. He urged the United Nations and the international community to do its utmost to prevent the Taliban's onslaught into Panjshir province. The mystery tunnel, first reported around 2016 in New Delhi, has sparked multiple speculation and experts said it will be too early to draw any conclusion unless the structure is thoroughly examined from an archaeological standpoint or any documentary evidence is found. The subterranean structure's mouth lies just below the floor of the assembly hall of the iconic building old secretariat, which was constructed in 1912 by the British after the imperial capital was shifted from Calcutta to Delhi, and it is being planned to be thrown open to the public next year. Delhi Assembly Speaker Ram Nivas Goyal on Friday said that the historical significance of the tunnel is yet to be established, but it is conjectured that the tunnel connects the assembly building to the Red Fort. He also claimed that there was an execution room at the site where Indian revolutionaries were brought by the British. Many historians and heritage experts, including those who have done extensive research on the multi-layered history of Delhi, however, have expressed skepticism over the claims and suggested scientific investigation of the structure and the site. Joe Biden will visit Ground Zero in New York City, the Pentagon, and the memorial outside Shanksville, Pennsylvania, where United Flight 93 was forced down, the White House said on September 4th. Visit all three 9-11 memorial sites to commemorate the 20th anniversary of the September 11th attacks and pay his respects to the nearly 3,000 people killed that day. Vice President Kamala Harris will travel to Shanksville, Pennsylvania for a separate event before joining the President at the Pentagon, the White House said. Harris will travel with her spouse, Doug Emhoff. Biden's itinerary is similar to the one President Barack Obama followed in 2011 on the 10th anniversary of the attacks. Obama's visit to New York City coincided with the opening of a memorial at the site where the iconic World Trade Center tower once stood. September 11th anniversary falls less than two weeks after the end of the nearly two-decade-long U.S. war in Afghanistan. Biden has found support from the public for ending the conflict, 
but has faced sharp criticism even from allies for the chaotic evacuation of the U.S. troops and allied Afghans during the final two weeks of August. Biden on Friday directed the declassification of certain documents related to the September 11 attacks in a gesture towards victims' families who have long sought the records in hope of implicating the Saudi government. The conflict between the government and the families over what classified information could be made public came into the open last month after many relatives, survivors and first responders said they would object to Biden's participation in 9-11 memorial events if the documents remain classified. Pakistan's Inter-Services Intelligence Chief Lieutenant General Faiz Hamid is in Kabul to meet the Taliban leadership, which is an advanced stage of government formation. General Hamid, leading a delegation of senior Pakistani leaders, is in Kabul at the invitation of the Taliban, according to reports in Afghan media. British Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab visiting Pakistan was told by Pakistan Army Chief General Kamar Javid Bachwa on Saturday that Islamabad will assist the Taliban to form an inclusive administration in neighboring Afghanistan. The Pakistan Observer reported that General Bachwa said in the meeting that Pakistan will continue to fight for peace and stability in Afghanistan as well as assist the formation of an inclusive administration. The Taliban have postponed the formation of a new government in Afghanistan for next week as it struggles to give shape to a broad-based and inclusive administration acceptable to the international community. This is the second time that the Taliban have delayed the government formation since their toppling of the U.S.-backed Afghanistan government. Initially, the group was expected to announce the formation of the new government led by its co-founder, Mullah Abdul Ghani Baradar, on Friday. Afghanistan's new rulers have pledged to be more accommodating than during their first stint in power, which also came after years of conflict, first the Soviet invasion of 1979 and then a bloody civil war. That regime was notorious for its brutal interpretation of Islamic law and its treatment of women. They have promised a more inclusive government that represents Afghanistan's complex ethnic makeup though women are unlikely to be included at the top levels, who were forced inside and denied access to school and work. That's all for the I. I'm Esther. Keep watching Hornbill TV.